So guys, um, this is Teaser from Eastin.de and I'm here with uh, Jordan Nothing Gilbert from uh, Cloud9. Um, you just won against uh, Team uh, Envious pretty convincingly 2-0. Um, give me your thoughts about the match. Uh, did you expect uh, such a clear win? Uh, well, last night in the hotel room we said, we pretty much guessed the maps. And um, we watch a lot of the pro teams a lot, so Envious, Virtus Pro, Nip, Fnatic, we kind of know a lot what they do in general. So last night we really just said, okay, we, we could win 2-0. We actually said that. We could actually 2-0 them if we play Overpass, Dust2, Train, or Cash. Any four, any four of those, we could 2-0 them if we, if we play our game. And it's, it wasn't really necessarily convincingly. I mean, it was a tough battle to win on some of those rounds, some big clutches. Um, luckily on Cash, we got a couple clutches back of our own. Freakazoid's big clutch. I had a clutch. And then on T-side, you know, we, we had lost some big rounds that we should have won. Um, so... Saying the word should have is pretty tough in Counter-Strike because anything can happen. So our, I think our preparation, I give a lot of credit to Sean Gears last night in the hotel room just gathering us and saying, this is how I'm going to call it. He was very decisive with his calling, and you know uh, that's something that we're trying to, to work on is just being more decisive with our play. So it went well. Okay, so uh, nearly every round you got uh, the first frag. Um, was this your main focus in order to, to beat them? So <laughs> No, um, I'm not really entry fagger, but I am a... We have kind of like two lurkers on the team, me and Sean Gares. And depending on the the, the, str the map, sometimes I'm just in a position to walk out first because there's no time to tell Freakazoid to come across the map. So, you know, the concept of roles sometimes is a little bit for the fans and it's just for the people on the forums to talk about who's this, that, and the other. But if you talk to any top player, whether it's Freebird from Nip or Keo from, from Envious, they may be the entry fraggers, but like not always do you have time to make sure that guy is peaking first or maybe he doesn't always have the hell through the whatever. So some of the plan was just like, on cash, I think it happened a lot, right? Where I got the entries. Um, I, 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 meant, I meant your team overall. Yeah, just kind of, oh, the team overall. Okay, yeah, so the team overall, I mean, we just talked about where we can get picks. I think a flaw of, us, of ours in the past on a lot of NA teams is doing strats without enough information. So we spent the time watching the demos, not just what strats they run, but why they run them and what scenarios, so that, like, on their CT side, if they don't throw smoke, what does that mean? And actually, uh, a lot of our guesses were right today in terms of where they were when they did or didn't throw stuff. And, yeah, credit, like I said, to Sean Gears. Okay, so um, the NA teams upsetting the Europeans a lot uh, this tournament. Uh, what do you think are the reasons? Um, is it just a better preparation, or are the Europeans just a little bit overconfident, maybe? I think it's a bit of everything, because, obviously, they just... I mean, I can go to the story of why Europeans have been more successful, but that's kind of a long-winded answer. But in general, they have better structure. They have more layers, and they just do things with a little bit more intention. This land, we definitely prepared well, but I think it was a perfect storm of, like, the people in the interviews kind of just like, yep, it's, I don't know why there's four North American teams here for such a big tournament. And I think it just dropped their guard down and made them play a little cocky, like buy into their own words. And I think that could happen when you're playing people that aren't skillfully that much worse than you, or even on an even keel, but tactically worse. If you make mistakes, we're going to bite you, bite you in the ass. So uh, I, think, I think it was a combination of factors. It's not like we can assume the same thing will happen the next tournament. But I do think with all the NA teams just preparing stronger at home, it's, it's helping us have more confidence here. So hopefully we see more of these results this year. Okay, so uh, your team is probably the loudest team uh, at this tournament. Is, is this tense atmosphere important for you, motivating each other? Tense? Yeah. Well, we don't feel very tense. I mean, the thing is, is the only tension was like in the, uh, the rounds you should win. It's so funny. Like when we're in like a four on one, I think that's when we get most nervous because we're like, how can we fuck this up? Excuse my language. And uh, so, no, I think the crowd always motivates us. Everyone always asks about the crowd, the crowd. It's almost like... I have, I'm more nervous with one person watching me than 10,000 because I feel like one person is just watching me and like critiquing when I, if you have 10,000, it's kind of just like a, an energy around you or the hundred or whatever it is. So it's, it's a lot of fun for us to get loud and get into it. Okay. So who do you think is your biggest opponent now? Um, f Fnatic's out. No, Fnatic's in it. Fnatic. Yeah. Virtus Pro and Fnatic are very tough. They have both have deep map pools and it's just hard. Um, we can't underestimate CLG tomorrow, so that's all we're going to focus on for now. All right, so thanks for taking the time. Any shout-outs? Uh, shout-outs to our sponsors, Cloud9, of course, everyone at home that supports, and, uh, yeah, ESL for putting out a good tournament. Hopefully the next one isn't 100 degrees. I don't think this is their fault, but that's why I'm wearing this and it's sweaty. Otherwise, 
Oh, yeah. People tell me about my flashbang trick looking at people's faces. Someone said they lost all respect for me. I was like, all right, well, then you just lost all respect for 90% of the pro community. It's pretty simple. Like, it's not it's not a legal thing. It's, it's the organizer's fault for how they set us up. I told them to put a wall in between. They can't do it. I think they'll improve on that next time. It's not a big deal. I just want the fans to realize that anything that's a gray area, it's not against the rules, someone on one team is going to use. So if you don't put it in the rules... You can't prevent me from turning my neck while I'm playing. So unless you fix the setup, that's going to happen. Thank you.